Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and as promised I'm trying to continue my series on goat care and maintenance and as you can see today we're going to be talking about my top list of medications that I think you need to keep on hand and kind of a generic list but this will give you an idea of some of the things that if you're going to raise goats you probably need to have some of these things on hand. So before I get started, I want to cover a few things. First off, I am not a veterinarian, okay? I am not a vet, I'm not a doctor, but this is just some of the medications I keep on hand because if you're going to be out here doing this stuff on a small farm, vet trips are expensive. And if you have to call a vet after hours, it's even more expensive. And there's a lot of things you can do at home on your farm to keep from having to go to the vet or in an emergency situation some things that I've got here that can keep my goats healthy enough, keep them alive until I can get to a vet or until I can get a fecal sample to the vet. So, as I said, I am not a doctor, I am not a vet, okay? So this is just what I've learned from my experience. So, before we get started in some of these medications, remember, as I covered in a previous video, a lot of these are um, injections, so you need to be sure you read the label. You need to read the label on all of these before you use them. But on the injectables, make sure you know if it's going to be a sub-Q, which is right under the skin. Remember, you pull up the little flap, give that shot right under the skin, or intermuscular, where it actually goes into the muscle. So, I'm not going to cover that in this video. If you're going to be giving your goats any medications um, that are injectable, make sure you know what type of injection to give. Okay? So, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is goat wormer. Um, I keep Kikos, I raise Kikos, they're a very parasite resistant goat, but that doesn't mean they have no parasites. And some of my goats are boar Kiko crosses, and boars are much more, um, have much more of an issue with parasites than Kikos. When it comes to internal parasites, we're talking about, you know, worms that they pick up on pasture. Like, like right now my goats are locked up on pasture, and they're on hay, and when the grass gets short, and there's more, um, Fecal matter, you know, that's where your internal parasites come from is they're grazing along that where their poop is. So you always want to rotate wormers. So I here I've got right now ivermectin and safeguard. You don't you don't just the main thing with wormers, don't just get one and stick with it. Use a variety, rotate through several different wormers so those parasites don't build up resistance. Um, when your goats get loaded with parasites, they'll start getting sick easy. Um, I know in goats they'll get um, they'll get a, like a uh, real fat jaw. You'll notice it. I mean, when a goat has a real bad worm load, they'll, they're, they're almost like they have a big double chin, kind of like me. You know, this thing that sticks down. But you'll notice that in your goats, and they're really wormy, and they can get um, anemic. So a goat with worm issues can go downhill fast on you, and you'll think it's a lot of other things, but it may just be an internal parasite problem. So the first thing always keep on hand is a variety of internal parasite wormers. The second is a good antibiotic. Um, what I like to keep on hand is LA-200. It's a good kind of broad spectrum antibiotic. It's good for things like um, pink eye, uh, navel um, infections on your baby kid goats, urinary tract infections. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see, but Bear wants to play. He always wants to play. Good for those urinary tract infections and um, things like pneumonia and just an overall antibiotic. You don't want to have a good antibiotic on hand for when you have sick goats. Bear, you need to get down. So, a good wormer and antibiotics is the second one. The third is electrolytes. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about scours today in this video. Scours is basically just diarrhea in your ruminants. So, baby goats get scours really bad, but adults, better get down. Adult goats can get scours too. Um, so when your goats have scours, there's obviously something going on in their digestive tract, in their rumen, or it could be several different things. There are a lot of different things that cause scours. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to handle that. But the first one is electrolytes. And I use, this is a Mana Pro. Um, it's a pound of powder. And you can see on there it was like six bucks. It's not bad. You just mix it with warm water. Um, and I take a big syringe and not really drench. I'm not tubing them. I'm just kind of forcing them to drink it a little bit. And then I'll mix it with our water 
you know, a small bowl, um, a goat that's got scours, I'm going to try to isolate them, put them by themselves, and make sure they're getting plenty of electrolytes. Just like you or I, when we get sick, um, you get, get a, you know, you're throwing up and get the flu and things, your electrolytes go down. Keep those electrolytes up and you'll have a healthier, happier goat, okay? Um, I'll leave a link below to most of these products. I'll try to find most of them on Amazon. Leave a link to where you can find them. If, I, if they're not on Amazon, I'll just leave a link to websites. Scours. So we're talking about scours. I, and obviously, like I said earlier, if they have scours, there's, a, there's something else going on. Some sort of parasite, something they ate, something's causing it. Maybe they're, they're, they're rumen, something's off in their rumen. But, you, that, so you need to find the root cause. But there's a lot of times, you know, if it's a after hour situation where you can't get a fecal sample to your vet real soon, you want to be able to stop that scouring so you're not taking a goat that's you know just prolonging that slow you know that slow death really basically get down bear um, so you want to do everything you can to prevent scours but when they get them you want to be able to have some sort of medication to, to fix that problem and what I use is um, the, these big tablets are called um, teramycin uh, I get them at my local feed store you can buy them online in a big bottle but my local feed store, you can just go in and pick out however many you want. So you don't have to buy the whole bottle for 60, 70 bucks. Bear, hey, come here, Bear. Sorry about that, guys. Bear likes to run off with my really expensive high dollar Maxwell House feed buckets and chew them up. So, scours. A goat with scours, bad problem. You want to get on top of it quickly, make sure they're getting plenty of water, plenty of electrolytes. And like I said, I use the, they're huge. I mean, look at the size of those. Um, Teramycin. Now the next thing I want to talk about is um, a vaccine that I really only give my goats one vaccine and I'll probably do another video later and cover the whole vaccination schedule and when I vaccinate and what I use and everything but the only vaccine I have well it's not on the table because I don't have any right now I gotta buy another bottle it's called CD&T um, now I'll probably mess this up and I've got some notes over here just so I don't mess it up. The CD is Clostridium perfringens, and the T is tetanus. So that's the only vaccination that I give my goats. Um, you don't want them to get tetanus because they're always out here, you know, messing around. They can get cuts and things, cuts on metal or cuts on tree limbs or, you know, a bite from an animal. You don't want them to get tetanus so you always want to use that CD and T. Um, the Clostridium perfringens, um, side of that like i said i'll probably cover it in another video that's just my vaccination schedule so but basically all you need to know cdnt once a year that's it okay the next medication i want to cover is a medication called corid and it treats coccidiosis coccidia is a parasite that lives in the gut of pretty much all goats but as they get to be adults like these grown does they pretty much build up a resistance to it um, so your kids your, your young baby goats are going to be the most susceptible to that coccidia and as we're talking about scours all ago coccidia causes really bad scours in baby goats they'll just look weak and a baby goat with coccidiosis um, just kind of kind of they just kind of stand there humped up um, they got scours are real weak they don't move a lot um, so corid I don't have any right now is a it comes in a big bottle and I'll leave a link to it um, it's available pretty much everywhere at any farm store Bear just keeps running up to me and jumping on me. Look at this. Bear, quit it. So you want to get a fecal sample to your vet, and he can he can determine for sure if it's coccidia. Um, but then that cord, you'll give that to your goats. I think it's um, five to seven days in a row uh, to try to knock that out. So always keep cord on hand for coccidia. Uh, the next one is an issue that I struggled with a lot last year, and that was you know I had a lot of a lot of. Uh, premature deliveries like my, my nannies were, were kidding early and having stillborn babies and then I had several if you go back and watch my old videos or if you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while you know I had some I showed you guys some sick baby goats and uh, had just some issues and then um, I also had some issues with this in some adult does and that is a, a vitamin B deficiency or thiamine more uh, more directly a thiamine issue um, in adult goats, uh, you'll see it, uh, it's just the weirdest thing, like they'll be fine one day and you'll come out and their head will just be turned sideways and they'll kind of walk in circles. Their head always wants to pull to one direction or it'll turn like this and they can't 
control it. Um, so from, from what I researched, it sounds like that vitamin B12 and thiamine deficiency comes from when you turn your goats out on, uh, out on pasture or put them on hay and they're not on feed. Um, they're, the rumen usually makes enough vitamin B to, to keep everything where it needs to be. But when you put them on straight hay or just out on pasture and they're not, you're not supplementing them enough, sometimes they'll get that deficiency. And so I always try to, well now, after last year and the issues I had, I try to keep a really good a fortified vitamin B um, in a vial like this. And then I also, after last year I was having so much problem, the vitamin B that fortified, you wanna make sure it's, your bottle says fortified um, vitamin B complex. Um, but I also found one last year that's just thiamine, and that really helped with those adult goats that were struggling with it. You know, they'd get that head turned sideways, and they would look fine for the first week or so, and then they'd just start slowly getting worse and worse. And I started hitting them with a lot of this thiamine, which was basically just a, a, a vitamin B in a real strong dosage, from what I understand, and it really helped out a lot. So um, try to keep that on hand. And, and learn about these things. Guys, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm not good at determining what's wrong with all these goats, but I've learned several things over the years. So do your research and try to look into some of these things and, and so you can see them coming when they on the first signs, okay? And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is something I use all the time, and it's just a goat nutri drench. And basically all it is is a nutrient rich supplement that I give to my baby goats right after birth. A lot of them, especially when it's really cold, they'll be moving kind of slow. It's basically just a booster, just to kind of a jump start those, those kids to get them going. And then if I've got a, you know, an adult doe that's kind of struggling and I'm having to, to medicate for something or they're just not, they just don't have the energy that I feel like they should, something's wrong, I'll hit them with, with some nutri drench for a couple of days. Can you guys see this? Look, here's Bear's paws. See that? That dog just standing here with his feet on my leg, wanting some attention. So, uh, goat nutri drench. It's really good stuff. I mean, it's really not even anything other than just some just a, a nutrient rich supplement. So it's not not anything strong. It's not gonna hurt anything. So, anyways, guys, that about covers it. That's my list of medications: wormers, um, antibiotic. Bear, quit. Vitamin B12 electrolytes, some scour medication, and a nutri drench. That's a basic, basically what I keep on hand all the time, uh, plus my CD&T vaccination. I didn't say that, but I don't have any right now. I'll have to get some more of that because I'll vaccinate soon. But anyways, if you're gonna if you're gonna raise goats, like I said earlier, you're gonna want to get a good, well-stocked list of medications and and things for your goats, just because you don't always want to make that trip to the vet. When you, if it's something you can do on your farm, it'll save you a lot of money to do it yourself. I promise you. You start loading up goats and take them to the vet all the time, that will eat up every penny of your profits plus some. I guarantee you, a vet bill, take a goat to the vet, you're gonna walk out of there with at least a $150 bill. So try to avoid those trips to the vet as much as you can by learning some of these tips and tricks to be able to take care of your, your goat issues on your own. So. That's all I've got. Bear's driving me crazy. He wants some attention, so I'm gonna play with Bear for a little while. Guys, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Like I said, I'm not a vet. I'm not an expert on all this stuff. This is just some things I've learned over the years. So if you have any suggestions or if there's any other medications that you keep on hand, um, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, everyone learns from the comment section. I love interacting with my viewers and subscribers in the comments. We all learn that way. So. I'm sure there's probably some things that I'm doing wrong. There's probably some things that you do differently than I do, and that's okay. So just leave those comments in the comment section below and we'll talk it out on there. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Love to have you stick around. Like I said, we're trying to, I'm trying to continue this series on goat care and maintenance because there's so many people that are subscribed to my channel that are new into this stuff and just learning. So that's what this is all about. There's a playlist for all these videos. Make sure you hit that playlist up there. Uh, goat care and maintenance. Thanks for watching guys. I do appreciate it. I hope y'all have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.